East Idaho Newsmakers is brought to you by the Bank of Commerce, your bank of a lifetime. This is East Idaho Newsmakers with Nate Eaton. Welcome to East Idaho Newsmakers. I'm Nate Eaton. Today we are talking with Adrian Murray. Before I introduce him, I want you to check out some of his artwork. These are actual photos you have taken, right? Yes. Photos you've taken with a camera. They look like portraits. They look like beautiful pictures and you have gained quite a following on Instagram with these photos. And you know, I saw this Instagram account, thought it looked pretty cool, and decided to invite Adrian here to East Idaho Newsmakers. It's a good thing you live here because you know, you're able to just drive over. Yeah, literally, a couple blocks away. <laughs> thanks, for, thanks for coming in. Um, I want to talk about your artwork and I want to talk about your Instagram account, but first let's just do kind of a basic introduction of, of who you are. You're not originally from East Idaho. Right, no, I'm, I'm originally from California. Um, my family's still back in California, and I moved a little over a decade ago uh, to Idaho. And I was trying to get away from the people, trying to kind of start life fresh, and met my wife shortly after I moved to Idaho. And that's kind of, you know, that's it really. Did my undergrad here, did my undergrad in, at uh, ISU, and did it in biology for pre-dentistry and went to dental school, went to Kentucky for dental school, and that whole story is complicated as it's, uh, as it's on its own. And that's, uh, we went to three years of dental school, decided it wasn't really for us, and took a year off, stayed in Kentucky for that, and then recently we just moved back to Idaho Falls where my wife's family is from. You moved here kind of on a whim. Yeah, that, the, the, yeah first time, for not, the first time, not, yeah, this not year. the second time, yeah. yeah. Uh, it was sort of on a whim. I uh, wasn't sure where I was going to go. I was selling alarm systems. I went to Colorado. The, the summer program that they were doing kind of tanked earlier than they expected, and they shut down operations uh, about a month early. Mm. And so it, I had to figure out a new place to go. My roommate was from Firth, and... I had my best childhood friend growing up, he was living in Pocatello. And I thought, well, Firth is gonna pass by Pocatello, so why don't I hitch a ride with him? Got a ride with him, he dropped me off over at my buddy's house. I stayed with him for a couple of weeks, and I wasn't planning on staying in Idaho at the time. Well, then I went back to California with him and his family. They were going on a family vacation, and I joined them to get another ride back get all my stuff and, and see what's going on in California. And while he was on vacation, I thought, you know what? I liked hanging out in Idaho. I kind of liked it. It was nice. So I thought, mind if I crash with you guys for a little bit and get a place over there? And we stayed, I stayed there for a month and I got a job in, uh, here in Idaho Falls uh, with a radio station and then met my wife and decided to go back to school, get my undergraduate done. Now, were you taking photos during all this time? No, I mean, I enjoyed photos, but not... You not weren't doing me. cool, fancy photos, oh, just random no, pictures? No, just, just as anybody does, you know? Like, everybody had a point-and-shoot at the time, you know, if you, you know, you were, had a like, little $600 camera, you just point-and-shoot and just did that. That's about the extent that I... When, when did you start really taking and considering doing photography? Uh, my first year of dental school, really. Um, I had a kind of an understanding of, of photography already, a, a basic understanding of it. And my mom, I was, I was raised by a single mother, and she, her major in college was art. And she was a teacher, so you combine those two together, and she kind of was my own art teacher when I was growing up. And so I kind of had a foundation with art. So I thought, well, I need a hobby. I need something to distract me from the stresses of dental school. And believe me, they're real. <laughs> it's, it's tough. And at the time, I was also struggling with my son's illness and trying to cope with nearly losing him uh, like the week we moved into dental school. That's a whole story that uh, it's hard to talk about. Um, but really, Coupled, I needed some kind of hobby and coupled with the fact that I just realized how fleeting life could be. I really wanted to document things. And so I was like, all right, let's get into a hobby, something that's, something that's gonna both record my family and, and 
also something to keep my mind not on 100% dentistry, uh, which may have been a blessing or a curse, depending on which way you look at it. <laughs> I, I, I might say a blessing, just yeah. <laughs> the, the, the fact that your work is so inspiring. And that's, it's, it's interesting to me that it sounds like it was kind of a tragedy that you said, I, you know, I want to document my kids, I want to have photos for my kids to have forever, but also something to escape yeah. other things. You, you start taking these photos, and at what point did you think, wow, I, I might really do this. I, this could be something. Um, honestly, within a few months of really focusing on it and like learning how to do it, I started getting featured on places like BuzzFeed. And just randomly, they just, were picking you up. Yeah. And so like the, the, fir there was the first big picture that started like going on to articles was my son. We went out on a walk and he was with our little Yorkie and he was petting the Yorkie and uh, her name's Sophie and he was petting her and he had a stick in his hand and we were trying to get him to throw the stick and he was just having a blast and uh, that picture went on to a BuzzFeed article about uh, 50 of the most amazing smiles in the world. You know how they do all those little list things? Well, it made that list and um, from there then I started to get picked up by photography articles, like I was featured as uh, one of the fathers for a Father's Day article uh, for some photography website. And then the story of my son went viral a couple months later after like people discovered how, how I got into photography. So it was really actually really quick. So how long had you been taking photos from that point to when BuzzFeed picked you up? Was it like a few months? A few months. Few months. Four months. And you were just taking the photos and putting them on Instagram. Um, no, I hadn't even tried Instagram yet. I was, you know, I was on it, but I didn't really use it as a platform. I was actually using a photo service called 500 Pix for 500 pixels, 500 px, mm -hmm. and um, and I didn't get into Instagram until like a year after I had been taking photos and didn't really post. And even then, I didn't really post. Did you know BuzzFeed was going to pick it up, or did they pick it up and you start getting? I, I, they just they said, hey, can we use this? And I was like, oh, sure. I don't. I, I didn't know what was normal or, or anything like that. And um, and it was you know kind of a blip of an article, nothing. Yeah. Nothing really big or anything, but it was kind of cool. It was a, an introduction to the way that the internet functioned and the way that sharing social images, media. Yeah. yeah. It, it was just kind of my introduction to the growth of social media and the potential of social media. From the beginning. Were you taking these photos? There's, there, you can take a photo, and then you can take a photo, and you're doing the second. You're taking a photo, and and some would say it's it would look not staged, but very edited, heavily edited, and whatnot. But that's that's not what you're doing. No, it's there's there's limited editing. I do as as little editing as possible. So I try to get everything the way that I want an image to look. Uh, I map it out in my head and I try to create it and make it look as exactly the way I want it from within the camera. Then I just adjust colors and contrast. And that's it. That's it. You're not positioning animals. No, there's, 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 I'm not taking a piece of another photo and putting it. Cropping it in, and, yeah. No, there's, I'm not like tracing around and putting in an animal and, and no. If you see, there's photos with my son and, and some deer, or both sons and some deer. Those are genuine. They are literally feeding deer. Um, I had opportunities with them, and so I utilized my opportunities. And this is something you've, you've, you think about before you take the photo mm -hmm. in your mind. Is that something, when you started taking your first photos, was that something that you did starting then, or was it as your craft developed, you thought, ooh, I could really take this to a new level? More so the latter. Um, when I first started, I didn't really have any storytelling going on in my images. Um, and then someone critiqued my portfolio, uh, the people from 500 Pixels, they were doing a new thing and they, they selected my account as like the first one that they were gonna do photo critics. Uh, that tapered out, they didn't really do it much after. Uh, I guess they didn't get enough audience that were interested in that, but they still did it for my account. And then one of the things they said was it would be great if there was more storytelling. And you know, I kind of took that to heart. And from there, it kind of evolved, and it's continually evolving. Um, our 
I don't want to say my artwork, I'm going to say our artwork is because we do this as a family, like the kids are involved and my wife is involved and it's not really just me doing this, so I'm uh, going to give this a plural, but it's our, our artwork is about now telling stories and it's always evolving to different styles and different stories that go on. Um, and to go along with what you were saying, do I come up with an idea for, for an image and then make the shot? And yes, that's exactly what happened. So an image that I posted this week to Instagram uh, was my oldest daughter with a little cabbage patch girl. And the reason why I did that is because for the last two weeks, she's been carrying that little doll everywhere she goes. She tucks them in, she feeds them, she, and she's two. So it's really fun to watch her imagination kind of focus on this little baby. She, she saw the doll and she gravitated to it just naturally. She got it from her grandma or her cousins or something like that and she just naturally does that. So I wanted to document that and tell a story about how that, how she kind of gravitated towards that and how much she focused on it. Because in 15 years I can look back at that image myself and say, yeah, I remember that. I remember that time in her life. And so that's, that's the idea behind most images. You've recently done a few with light like the, I'm, I'm picturing the kids looking in, is it like a treasure box? Uh, it's a suitcase. Like suitcase and just light beaming out. Yeah, that's a new thing I've been doing. It's, it's a, it, like I said, it's a beautiful photo that one, one could say, that's, that's not real, you know. That's one shot. That's one shot? One shot. That, that's a, that's you must have very patient children. Uh, they like cookies. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Smart. <laughs> so, you, you're in dental school. I want to talk about, if you don't mind, the, the yeah. story of your, your son that went viral uh, in a few minutes here. But you're in dental school. Uh, third, third year, you decide, maybe this isn't for me. You guys decide to move back to Idaho. Is that when you decide to say, I'm going to really go all out on photography? Um, we, yes, sort of. In it, we wanted to go in that direction. We, we're, we're still figuring it out, honestly. Um, so the, you're kind of asking about the career of photography. And our career in photography is very different. When you think of someone saying, I'm a photographer, you think, OK, well, you either make prints of landscapes or you take pictures of people, That's a pretty much. Or you're a photojournalist, something along those general lines. Um, well, in the last seven, 10 years or so, there's kind of a new evolution, a new type of job that's out, and that's kind of a social media influencer. We enjoy this. Uh, we actually get paid to produce advertisements for companies and, and do that, and that's kind of a new development. When we just left dental school, uh, we were still kind of figuring that out. I was doing workshops for other photographers, which is one way that some photographers make money. They do classes and educate. Mm -hmm. And really, I kind of thought to myself, I thought, okay, so what am I really good at? And it, I'm really good at taking pictures of my kids, uh, of my family, and telling those stories. And so what happened is we kind of fell into this whole social media influencing thing. At the time when we started taking clients um, for different kind of advertisements, we were, let's see, 140,000 followers-ish, 150,000 followers on Instagram. I don't really remember. Um, and I thought, you know, that this is, this is an okay way to make some extra money. And, and then it kind of turned into this thing where it's like, well, this is, this is really fun. The kids get to play with different toys. So we did, a, we did an ad for, um, for Disney and Pixar's uh, Cars 3. And they were doing a joint advertisement with Dole. So it was two companies. And so it's, it's completely in, in my control. Like I'm the art director, I'm the photographer, my kids are the models. I mean, we work from home, we work as a family from home, and you know, the kids enjoy it. And you were telling me before we started rolling, it's not like, I know everybody watching is, is gonna think, I wanna call them and have them come over and take photos of my kids. <laughs> I may have said that to my wife, but you're not, <laughs> you're not doing that. I, I don't really do that. Uh, we thought about it. When we first moved back to Idaho Falls, we even created like a little card and thought about doing that but not in like the traditional sense. You know, when you think about a traditional photo session, you're like, okay, you go to a certain area and you take some pictures with a photographer. You pay something like $500 and you get family portraits done. You get a bunch of images. And I thought, well, that's, that's fine. I can do that. But that's, they're not going to get 
they're not gonna get something that they see on my Instagram by doing the same thing that every other photographer does. So it takes a different, a different way of doing things to, do, to create what we create. And my goal when I take photos isn't necessarily to get like a whole collection of images that are fine. It's to get something meaningful, to get something that's gonna have emotion and impact and um, combine all the elements of photography, the composition, the color, the lighting, into one piece. And so the goal with the marketing of the idea of, um, to take clients here locally was A, we wanted to be a part of the community, and B, we wanted to give, we wanted people to rethink photography and think of it more of like art and commissioning an artist to create something. Of course, that's not exactly cheap. So if you're watching and you, you want to spend some money for a really decent piece of art, that's how, that's how you can yeah, look at I would, it. Yeah, I would form you would it more consider of art. Yeah. Okay. We're going to take a quick break here. When we come back, I want to hear the story about your son, how he's doing. Talk about some of the pictures and show you some of the photos and talk about what's next. We'll be right back. At the Bank of Commerce, we understand the hard work, determination, and sacrifice it takes to run a successful business. That's why we're here every step of the way to help make your dreams come true. The Bank of Commerce, your bank of a lifetime. Thanks for being with us today. We're talking with Adrian Murray, who has quite a following on Instagram for the beautiful pieces of artwork, photos that he takes. And he's also a social media influencer, which five or 10 years ago, you, we had probably never heard that term. Yeah. Did you ever think as a kid, I'm gonna be a social media influencer? No, no, uh, shoot, even two years ago, I wouldn't, right, I, wouldn't, yeah. I wouldn't have thought of that. You mentioned before the break that you kind of realized that photography is something that you should explore when your son uh, was he diagnosed or I guess became very sick? How, how did that So it, we moved to Kentucky. I, I got accepted into dental school and was supposed to move within two weeks or a couple weeks. So I was on a wait list and then I graduated from ISU and then that weekend I got the acceptance saying, hey, you're going to dental school. I thought, okay. So I've got to pack up my house and go. And we had our, he was at the time seven months old, our son, perfectly normal walking. Uh, walking at like eight months or so, and he was just, he was there, he was ready, he was, he was, like, he was getting to, ready to go and, and grow up and be a toddler. So we packed up our stuff and drove across the country and moved in, and the day, the day we were unpacking the moving trailer, I started unpacking the bathroom stuff and put it into the bathroom, and I see on the little uh, vanity that uh, a pregnancy test that my wife had brought out. So she was pregnant at the time. And, and your son's seven months old. Seven months old, yeah. Um, and so I thought, okay, well this is this will be interesting. We just, uh, we're starting dental school in a week and so now I've got a pregnant wife. Okay, now we can do this. With a infant, seven With, months yeah, old. Yeah, yeah, a baby. And so I'm like, all right, we can do this. Well, a week into starting dental school, um, I woke up, we, you know, doing the routine, brushing my teeth, and I realized, you know, my son hasn't kind of, hasn't woke up yet. It's a little late for him. And he's in his crib, and I go in to check on him. And, um, and he was laying there, and in this little puddle of sweat, basically, like the, the crib mattress had absorbed most of it, but you can see it now, a rim of, of liquid, and couldn't wake him up. Limp as a fish, pale, a little cold. It's pretty much every parent's worst nightmare. And so we took him across the hall, put in some some lukewarm water, trying to trying to get him to wake up a little bit because you, we could tell he had some shallow breathing. So he wasn't completely lost. Once we realized that, we were like, okay, we need to hurry up. Got in the car, rushed to the hospital. Went to the, the wrong hospital, I guess. I mean, we'd only been there for two weeks. We didn't even know where to go. We didn't know where to go. We were yeah. like, I went to the place that was closest to the, because I was just going to dental school for a couple of days, but I knew that I walked past the hospital, so I went there. Mm -hmm. Like, I know how to get there, because I've been there a couple of times already. So I go to that one, they tell us, no, they can't do that. They can't work with it. I'm, I'm, like, I'm literally like holding my child and running into this emergency room, and he's, you can tell something's wrong, and they're like, 
we can't take care of them here, but you can take them to this other hospital, and it's another block away. But I mean, all the one ways we were so lost, and I just rushed in. We took them in, and thankfully they were able to, you know, bring them back to normal. We had no clue what's going on. No clue. They didn't have any answers. Three days of tests. Our son was in there for three days, had a spinal tap. You know how hard it is to agree to have your months old child do a spinal tap. That's and especially when you know how excruciating that feeling must be for a baby. So we were there for days and left with nothing, except that our son was starting to come back. About a month after that incident, we were doing another nightly routine. We thought, okay, maybe that was just a fluke. We kind of were okay. We were coming back to normalcy. My wife felt like something was off. She was like, I'm gonna stick with him for just a you know, few more minutes because he was fussy. He was really fussy at the time. And, um, I was like, okay, so you know, we said goodnight and I was gonna let her kind of put him down and then five minutes later, she calls me in and he was convulsing and just having a seizure. Uh, and again, new parents, never seen anyone with epilepsy, neither of us. By the time we got him in the hospital and in a bed that could actually accept where he could get some medicine, some emergency medicine, um, it had been an, a little over an hour that he had seized. But after that second episode, it's just, then we had him on epilepsy medicine and everything just became very serious. And that was, I mean, you're only talking a month and a half into dental school. And I had become very acquainted with the hospital. Only a few weeks of living there. And so it was just kind of this realization that, man, any, any, any moment, something could happen. And was, so was he diagnosed with epilepsy? He was diagnosed with epilepsy. How old is he now? He's five. And how's he doing? He, he's doing okay. Um, we still have seizures. He had a seizure yesterday at school. Um, but it was only a few seconds long. And typically he has a seizure or so, or a cluster of seizures every couple of weeks. But we have him on medication that keep it at bay. Before, without any medication, it, he'd be seizing every day. But epilepsy isn't the only issue that he has. He actually has a very rare uh, genetic mutation that only a handful of people in the world that we know have, and only one doctor is studying. And uh, it's, it's, it causes, apparently, and I just learned this the other day, um, the physiology of the brain is very similar in his condition as to an Alzheimer's patient. The news that we got the other day about how that it's similar to Alzheimer's was kind of like a, wow, that means we essentially have a toddler or a child with that Alzheimer's. Or, uh, but at the same time, like, that's good. He has a rare condition, but if it's medication that's for Alzheimer's might work for him, then that means we actually have like something that they're researching Alzheimer's. They're not really researching his condition yeah. because there's not a whole lot of there's, you know, there's not a lot of patients with that, so research just money isn't going to go that direction. Mm -hmm. But if it's similar to Alzheimer's, and we could kind of piggyback off of that, yeah. then there's, there's maybe some hope there that uh, maybe we can curb some of the symptoms, and that's the hope. Yeah, and, and it makes perfect sense as this young father in medical school, wife pregnant, going through all of this to think, maybe I need to do something I'm passionate about, and while you're doing that, capturing life moments. So tell us about some of your favorite photos. Do you have an all-time favorite? Yeah, you know, there's, there's some famous photography quotes saying like their favorite photograph is the one that they haven't taken yet or, or something along those lines. Um, and uh, I, I guess I would, I would kind of agree with that. It's, it's you know, tomorrow. Whatever's gonna, next. Yeah, whatever's next. You, do you always have your children in the photos? Yeah. How often is it the first shot? Pretty good amount, actually. Really? Yeah. Um, it's, I don't take 100 photos. I usually take about, about 20. Mm -hmm. I don't really want to take too much time. Kids' attention spans are really small. Yeah. So, <laughs> so we try to limit that. What would you say to people watching that want to go chase their passion but can't be a social media influencer? It's, it's hard. Uh, it's, it's a difficult 
road to take and you kind of have to take a leap of faith. You, I, I think at the time that I was making the decisions, I just kept seeing the, this same concept pop up and it's that you have, you have to take a leap. It, it is genuinely a leap. If you really want to do what you want to do, then you're going to go down a hard road. But um, it, it may be worth it. And, it, and you, you can't always go through life not doing what you really want to do because if you don't, then you're just going to think back, well, I could have done that 20 years ago. I, I had the chance. I could have done that. Now I'm stuck here in, in, a, in an office and, and doing something that you know, pays the bills, but does it really, is it really fulfilling my life? And so a year and a half ago, I, I took the leap. Now, granted, I will say it was a little easier slash harder to make this decision because the school presented me with an option. Like I said, I failed a couple classes. They wanted me to repeat my third year. Now, for those of you that don't know, that would cost me an additional $100,000 in debt. So typically our, our dental school year would be about 100 grand. And since no one's making any money, and this is out of state, um, since no one's making any money, you also have to take a little bit extra out to live. But I would say if you want to follow your passion, I mean, do it. Just if, if it's sitting there and if you've been thinking about it and it's, and it's always been there, do it. Don't just think about it. I mean, we, can, we all have different things. I mean, what's, let's turn this interview around. <laughs> I don't was, know if we want to do that. <laughs> no, we, you sit there and you, you, you interview so many people. Well, let's, let's... My passion is this. My is passion this? Okay. is, honestly, I didn't know you an hour ago. I'd seen your work. I know so much more about you, about why you do what you do. I mean, that, that to me is fascinating. I wish that you know, I could talk with people. I don't care if cameras are here. Just talk with people all day long and, and learn about what makes them so good. And that, So that's perfect then. But you weren't always doing this, were you? No, I wasn't. And I get paid for it, so that's nice. And, <laughs> and maybe one day I'll get tired of it and go work at a hardware store. I don't know. And, and that's, that's the other thing, is, is if you try it and if you don't, like if you want to do something you want, like if you, didn't had, if you hadn't made it to this point where you're able to do what you want to do and you get paid to do it, um, you, there's always a backup plan. No matter what, there's always something else out there for us to do, but at least you tried. Yeah. We're glad you tried, because the, 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 the work is impressive. We're going to link to Adrian's website and Facebook page on Facebook. I, I think Instagram's the Instagram, nice Facebook, Facebook is... Instagram's it. We'll link to the Instagram account. You can go follow him. And uh, how often do you post? Just About once a day. So every day, new photo. Pretty much. There you go. Adrian, very impressive. We appreciate you, you here. We're glad you're in East Idaho, because people all over the world are following you. We're excited to see what's next. Thanks for coming in. Thanks for watching. Have a good week. East Idaho Newsmakers is brought to you by the Bank of Commerce, your bank of a lifetime.